Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and the other day my friend Smoke Monster asked me to pick out my favorite flash cartridge of all time. And this is a really hard question to answer on a couple of levels. The first being that I have way too many flash cartridges. <laughs> I've got three for the Sega Genesis here, as you can see, and three for the original 8-bit Nintendo hardware. I've got some other ones too, like the Mega EverDrive 64. I've got one here on my Game Boy, and I've got another one here for the Game Boy Advance that I usually leave in my DS Lite here. And if you don't know what a flash cartridge is, basically they let you load up games for vintage uh, consoles onto an SD card. So you put the SD card into the cartridge, and then you put the cartridge into the system, and you can boot up as many games as you want uh, without having to swap cartridges out. And when you've got something like the Game Boy here, it's kind of nice to just have a full library with you all the time without having to have cartridges around that you might lose. Uh, so as a result, it's very hard to pick a winner here. But if there was one that I think kind of stands out a little bit, it's the SD2 SNES. I bought this probably back in 2014 or 2015 or so. And over the years, it's gotten better and better because it's an open source project. The hardware side and the software side are open source. And we've seen the community uh, start to develop for it as they figured out how it works. And just the other day, uh, they added a new feature to play Super Game Boy games on this thing. So we're going to try that in a second. And additionally, one thing I haven't done a video on is the fact that the SD2 SNES can now do Super FX games like Star Fox, things that the cartridge couldn't do when it came out. And I'm using the same hardware that I bought way back in 2014, 2015. I'm getting new stuff without having to buy something new. And that adds a lot of value. So we're going to be taking a look at some of the new things you can do with the SD2 SNES, basically a follow-up to a video I did six years ago. And we're going to dive into that in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I did buy this SD2 SNES with my own funds way back in the day. And all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. And nobody is reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get my SNES out here and boot this cartridge up and see how all of this works. I just got to clean up my workspace here a little bit and let's get to it. Now for hardware today, we're going to be using an original Super Nintendo console. And I just think it's awesome to demo these flash cartridges using the original hardware. Just adds some real authenticity to the whole presentation here. Uh, but this would work equally well with the Super NT from Analog which is an awesome clone console for Super Nintendo games. It gives you pristine 1080p output. It looks awesome. But again, I just wanted to use it on original hardware today. Now, the result is that the video quality won't be spectacular. And I'll explain how we're bringing the video in in a second. But again, I just like the authenticity of all of that. Uh, now, on this SD card here, I've loaded up a bunch of games. I also loaded the latest firmware for the cartridge. And then I also went over to Smoke Monster's video on the new Super Game Boy functionality where he's got a link to uh, some files that you need to get the Super Game Boy functioning as well. And that's all on the card here. And I'll put a link to that video down in the video description so you can check out Smoke Monster's experimentation with that. Uh, we're going to turn on the console now. And what I have uh, going up on screen here is the output from this little device here. Uh, this is called the RetroTank 2X, and this is a line doubler. So it takes video in from the composite cable here and doubles it up to 480p and then pushes it out into my video system. Now I'm using co uh, composite video here, so it doesn't look as crisp as it would if I had an RGB cable, which I don't have for this console. Uh, but it should be better than what it would look like if I was using some other scaling device. So it'll work. And I think it adds, again, a little bit more authenticity to it to have less than a pristine image here. Now, some of the games we're going to try out today include some Super FX titles. And I'm going to start with uh, Star Fox, which, of course, was one of the most well-known uh, Super FX games here. So let's just load that up and see what happens. Now, what's happening right now is the cartridge is basically having its onboard FPGA simulate the Super FX chip that was on the original Star Fox cartridge. So every Star Fox cartridge came with its own little coprocessor, essentially, to generate the 3D graphics here. And that chip is now being replicated here on the uh, Super Nintendo console through the flash cartridge that we have plugged into it. Now, my controller here is a little on the old side, so it may not uh, control so great, but we'll just take a quick look at the game here and see how it all works. 
and uh, so far so good. It looks pretty pretty good to me. And this is awesome, again, to be able to do this on the flash cartridge, which we couldn't do a couple of years ago when it first came out. Uh, so all good there. So it should be running just fine. All right, next I want to check out Doom, uh, which of course is a port of the PC title of the same name. And this was pretty remarkable for its time because it actually doesn't look too bad uh, for a 16-bit console. Now this used the Super FX2 chip, uh, which was a slight variation from the Super FX chip that was on what we were just playing, Star Fox. And as you can see here, although it's nowhere nearly as good as the PC version was and super hard to control with the uh, Super Nintendo game controller, it's actually not doing too bad here. The map looks familiar enough to me that I know how to get around it here. And uh, the one thing that I'm just struggling with is getting used to the button placement. Obviously the resolution is super low on this. And as you can see, it's not taking up a lot of the screen, but still for a cartridge based game on the Super Nintendo, uh, this still looks pretty good. And it's great to see this working successfully on the SD2 SNES cartridge. And this is Yoshi's Island. It seems to be working just fine as well. So it's good to see uh, some really good compatibility here with the Super FX and the Super FX2. All right, one last Super FX thing to check out and that is Star Fox 2. Now this was never released officially for the Super Nintendo uh, here in the US or Japan, I believe, but it did make its way officially onto the uh, SNES Classic console that came out a couple of years ago. And as you can see, this is running great with the SD2 SNES on original hardware. And because there is not an official cartridge anywhere, this is an example of how a flash cartridge can allow you to experience things that you would not have been able to experience before. And it looks and plays great here on original hardware using the SD2 SNES. All good stuff. So. Uh, now it's time, though, to move on to the Super Game Boy, because I know a lot of you are curious about that. So let's boot that up now and see how it works. All right, we're going to start off with Space Invaders, which is Super Game Boy Enhanced. And this one has not only the Super Game Boy enhancements that you'll see load in here in a second, uh, but also a unique version of Space Invaders uh, when the game was plugged into a Super Nintendo console. So you can see when I'm booting up the game here that it's asking for the Super Game Boy version or the arcade version. And when I select arcade here, uh, this is going to actually load up a Super Nintendo version of Space Invaders that was stored on the Game Boy cartridge. And this would only load if you plug that Game Boy cartridge into a Super Game Boy uh, on a SNES console, uh, but as you can see here, we now have it running uh, with just the flash cartridge, and we'll just go ahead and select the first item here, and there you go. So this would not run on the Game Boy. You wouldn't have this screen here, uh, but we're able to play a unique version of Space Invaders, just like we would if we had the Super Game Boy and the Space Invaders cartridge. I think this is very, very cool, and it seems to be uh, running just as well as it did on the original hardware when we tested it out a few months ago. Pretty cool stuff. Now, what's cool about how the Super Game Boy worked back in the day is that it was essentially a Game Boy on a cartridge, and that is what's happening here with the SD2 SNES. Its FPGA uh, is replicating the Z80 processor, and it's doing all the Super Game Boy stuff at the same time. So it's really remarkable uh, what the developer of this put together. So you can play the Game Boy version of Space Invaders or again, uh, be able to load up that fancier Super Nintendo version as well. Let's take a look at a few other games. All right, next up is Donkey Kong. And by the way, you're gonna see that this is booting up as a Super Game Boy 2, uh, which was a little better than the original Super Game Boy. It's more accurate in its timings. Uh, the Gaming Historian did a great video on the Super Game Boy hardware that I definitely suggest you check out. Now the enhancements here are similar to what we saw with Space Invaders in that we get a special custom border. Uh, that title screen that you just saw was kind of unique to the uh, Super Game Boy version of the game. Uh, so it's all embedded on the Game Boy cartridge, but things are a little different when connected to the Super Nintendo hardware. Uh, also here, there's some custom audio. So as she's screaming for help at the top of the screen, uh, that is coming through the Super Nintendo's audio hardware. Uh, that voice is not something you would have heard on the Game Boy. And here you can see the game playing and we've got all these colors that you wouldn't see on the black and white Game Boy cartridge. Pretty cool stuff and also seems to be working quite nicely here. Uh, this is an early release of the 
uh, core as I'm playing with it now, so I'm sure over time this will improve. So if you see any glitches or anything, that's probably going to get worked out as time goes on here. And you can uh, see the game continues there. We've got the custom audio, and we're going to keep playing through. Now here's another one that's worth talking about. This is Animaniacs, and of course we get the custom border here, but they also replace the music uh, with a Super Nintendo audio hardware soundtrack. And this was by Factor 5, who we all know from uh, the Star Wars game on the GameCube, among many others. They've done some amazing stuff over the years, and this is another one of those games. And once the music comes up here, I will turn the music volume up for a second so you can hear what it sounds like. So you can hear that that music is not the Game Boy music, so you got a special soundtrack here on the Super Nintendo that you wouldn't get on the handheld hardware. Now it also works with regular unenhanced Game Boy games, of course, so this is Motocross Maniacs, one of my favorite games from when I was a kid. And what'll happen here is we'll go through the boot up process like we did before, uh, but now we'll just have some of the basic settings applied. So you'll get a little bit of color here, as you can see, uh, based on a color palette that uh, it works best with the game. Some games had some color palettes kind of dialed in. Uh, others, it just tried to take its best guess as to how it should look. And if you wanted to change things, what you could do here is push down uh, the left and right shoulder buttons, and that would give you the option to use some preset ones. I kind of like uh, this circuit board one here uh, that you could use instead. Uh, you could draw your own. They had a little drawing feature here where you could just go ahead and start drawing with a little pencil. Uh, so a little, bit, a little bit tedious, but you could do that if you wanted to. Uh, we also could go in and change the color palette of the game itself. So I could go through a couple different things here to see what uh, works best. And maybe if I like uh, maybe this one, eh, maybe that don't work. Uh, we'll go over here and then just hit the shoulder buttons again and we're back in the game with a different border there. So a lot of neat features kind of built into the Super Game Boy and it looks like most of those seem to be working already uh, in this early release version. So I'm really eager to see uh, how things develop here on this new feature that they added to the SD2 SNES. And again, it's just one of these cool things that uh, we've got now on a piece of hardware that's been around for a while and it's getting these things because it is open source and there are people that want to see something added to the platform and are able to add it. So it works and it's great and you don't need the new one to do it either. Uh, there is a newer SD2 SNES Pro that does add some more features. It has a more advanced FPGA, I believe. But again, a lot goes on here with just the original. And if you haven't played with yours in a while, uh, go grab that firmware and you'll get all the functionality you just saw here. Good stuff. And that is why at the moment, at least, this is my favorite flash cartridge, just because it keeps giving me new things to play with on my original hardware and on my Super NT as well. That's going to do it for now. Let me know what you thought down in the comments below. And until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Tom Albrecht, Chris Allegretta, David Hockman, Brian Parker, Mike Patterson, and Bill Pomerantz. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.